Welcome to P Academy. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at capacitor. So we'll be looking at what exactly is a capacitor, the kind of connections that we have in capacitor, and um, you know, and every other thing that you might need to know about capacitor, the types, the and the formulas associated with it. So before we get into the video, um, if you are new to P Academy or you are yet to subscribe to the channel, kindly take out time to click on that subscribe button to subscribe to the channel. Alright, so thank you very much if you have just done that. So to get started, so now let's look at what a capacitor is. So by definition, you see that it says capacitor is a device that stores electric energy. You can see so this is just one, uh, one keyword that stores electric energy in an electric field by accumulating electric charge. So by accumulating electric charge onto two closely spaced surfaces that are insulated from each other exactly so once we look at the types of capacitor so i believe the definition itself will make sense okay so and sometimes someone wants to divide it they just know that okay capacitor is a device that actually stores charges or energy all right so now let's look at the arrangement of capacitor or the types of connections that you can have in a capacitor so um, the first one we'll look we will look at is capacitor in series so actually we have it in series and parallel just like we have it in that of a resistor however is they are the opposite of each other exactly so for that of capacitor in series it says that the capacitor have have the same charge but different voltage exactly so before we go further into this so for capacitor now you have to the symbol for it is just C. That's the symbol for C for capacitor. And it is measured. So and it is measured in farad. In farad. So the unit is F. Exactly. So now depending on the how high it is, then you can have microfarad, picofarad, nanofarad, and the likes. Exactly. So once we look at the example, you will understand that. Okay, so now let's come back to the connections. Like you said, the series connections, they have the same charge but different voltage. So let me give you a picture of what that looks like now. So if you have to draw a circuit, okay. Alright, so, you know, by default, if you have to draw the symbol for, uh, for capacitor, it's just like this. You're going to have um, two parallel lines, just small like this. So... So that's it. this is how um, a capacitor look like. So where this is one terminal here, and this is another terminal. So like this is the symbol. So let me just write it capacitor symbol. Exactly. So now let's go back to the series connection. So if we have a capacitor connected in series, so and when we say it's connected in series, that means it is also connected end to end just like we have the definitions for that of a series resistor so we have a capacitor connected to a voltage source so it will look like this and then we have let's just demarcate it that this is the terminal here so that means from here let's call it v1 so from here to here, so let's call this V2, so, and then this is V, so this is our C1 and C2. So in this diagram now we have two capacitors that they are connected in series. So now when they are connected in series, how do we calculate the equivalent capac uh, the capacitance exactly? So, and then the formula for capacitor, when you add to relate capacitor is always Q is equals to CV where this is the charge so where we have the Q is equals to charge and then we have the C which is the capacitance and then the V which is for the voltage exactly so the voltage is in V the capacitance okay is in farad and then the charge is in coulombs okay 
So with that now, since we know that Q is equal to CV, that means our C is equal to Q over V. Exactly. All right. So now for us to get the equivalent capacitance for a capac for capacitors that are connected in series. Exactly. But let's go back to the definition. It says the capacitance have the same charge but different voltage. Exactly. They have the same charge but different voltage. So that means, using this diagram as an example, that means our V, that means this V here, is equals to V1 plus V2. Exactly. So let me come and write it here. That means our V is equals to V1 plus V2. So in that case, so from v, Q is equals to CV, so if we make V the subject formula, so let me, let's say make V the subject formula, or subject of the formula. So we are going to be having V is equals to Q over C. All right, all right. So now, if you are to now make reference to this, that means our V, V1 will be equals to Q1 over C1, and our V2 will be Q2 over V2. Are we good? So now, from the, from the from that of a series connection, we are told that again, and let me make reference to it again. So we are told that the capacitors have the same charge but different voltage exactly now for them to have the same charge that means when they are connected in series our q is also the same thing as our q1 is also the same thing as our q2 are we good so from here now are we our v is equal to v1 plus v2 that means our that means our this is our v and this is our V1 and this is our V2. So that means we are going to be having Q over V is equals to Q1 over V1 plus Q2 over V2. So and we've established that they have the same charge. That means our Q is equals to Q1 and it's also the same thing as our Q2. So we can write this um, equation as Q over V is equals to Q over V1. So from this V is equals to V1 plus V2. So we already know our V is Q over C. This is our V1 and this is our V2. So that means we are having Q over C is equals to Q1 over C1 plus Q2 over C2. Now we already know that Q1 is Q is same as Q1, also the same as Q2. So we can rewrite this as Q over C is equals to Q over C1 plus Q over C2, okay? So if we should simplify this, we can say Q over C is equals to Q over, or let me just write it like this, that Q over C is equals to Q, into brackets, 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So since we have Q is common on both sides, so we can just say uh, multiply both sides. So multiply both sides by 1 over Q. So that will be Q over C times 1 over Q is equals to 1 over Q times Q into brackets 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So this will cancel this, this can cancel this. So with that, that means our 1 over C is equals to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So if you should solve, solve this and make this the subject formula, we are going to be having our C is equals to C1, C2 over C1 plus C2. And that is how, you, that is the formula you are going to use to calculate the equivalent capacitance of capacitors connected in series. Now, if you compare this now, basically what is just there is that 
the formula to calculate the capacitance in series is just the opposite of calculating the equivalent resistance of a resistor connected in parallel exactly so as many as parallel resistor now we are going to be having our r is equals to r1 r2 over r1 plus r2 this is for resistor exactly and that is when they are connected in parallel but if it is capacitor connected in series this is how it will look like exactly okay so now let's also talk about capacitor when they are arranged in parallel so just like like i said earlier so when a capacitor is connected so when we have capacitors in parallel exactly the formula is just the opposite of um i mean or let's just say it's just similar to resistors connected in series so in that case if you have um different capacitors if you have c1 c2 exactly and you have to calculate the equivalent uh, capacitance of the capacitor that means you are going to be having our c let's call it c equivalent or let me just call c total is equals to c1 plus c2 exactly so if it is also in um if it is more than two it's just, so it should just be c1 plus c2 plus c3 till the number of whatever the number of capacitors that you have in that parallel connection exactly so just take note of that this the resistors in series and parallel the formula for it is in opposite is opposite to that of capacitor exactly so still within the spirit of calculation so if you are also to calculate the energy stored in a capacitor so to calculate that it is giving us 1 over 2 cv square and since it is energy you can just give it the units it is still being joules so in this now where we have 1 over 2 cv square being the energy so the energy stored in a capacitor is 1 over 2 cv square so the c there is the capacitance of the capacitor and then the v is the voltage so this is pretty much um, straightforward then let's quickly talk about the types of capacitor so in, in classifying a capacitor it says capacitors can be classified into several types depending on the type of dielectric material used to separate the two conductive plates exactly so depending on the dielectric that is used to separate the two conducting plates then we can class them as the type so on the first one we have the we have the air capacitor so it says this consists of air as a dielectric material exactly so for the air capacitor air is used as a dielectric material so all of these capacitor that you are seeing on the screen there so the best thing you can just do is to just try to search on them and to see how they actually uh, look like so we also have the paper capacitor it says it uh, that's the, the second one it says what it consists of aluminium foil with impregnated paper that is wax as the what as dielectric so then for the mica capacitor uh, this is formed by interleaving mica in between the two silver metal are we good so that's for the mica capacitor then for the ceramic so the ceramic is what is used as a dielectric material in this type of capacitor so the fifth one we have the polycarbonate capacitor so in this in the polycarbonate uh, plastic is what they used as a dielectric material for this kind of capacitor so plastic is used then the last one on the list which is the electrolytic it says this consists of two aluminium foil one oxidized and the other is not which are then treated with electrolytes exactly so these are the ones that i want to mention as the types of capacitor the air type the paper type the mica the ceramic the polycarbonate and the electrolytic capacitor so you can just take note that okay for the air capacitor air is what is used as a dielectric then for the paper capacitor then aluminium foil with impregnated paper wax is what is used as the um, dielectric material then for that of ceramic ceramic is what is used as the dielect dielectric material then for polycarbonates just know that it is plastic exactly so once you're able to know some of these things you'll be able to remember them so then finally before we round up let's look at few uses of capacitor so number one we use the capacitor to store charges just from the definition alone that is 
and that's what a lot of people used to usually remember capacitor for using it to store the charge it's also used for power conditioning it is also used in signal processing and it's also used in power factor correction so all right and before we go again I also want to add this to it. Now, if you look at this circuit which I used earlier when talking about the capacitor connected in series. Now, since they are connected in series, like we said, if you look at the formula, I said that the capacitor have the same charge for different voltage. So that means the voltage across capacitor 1, which is C1, is V1, and is also different from that passing through the second capacitor, which is V2. So if for any reason you want to calculate the voltage V1, that is flowing across um, the capacitor C1. So the formula is just that will just be C2 divided by C1 plus C2 multiplied by the total voltage. Exactly. So that's just then if it's the V2, then you just use C1 over. C1 plus C2 multiplied by the total voltage exactly. So that's the formula that you're going to use. So that is everything I want to cover in this video under capacitor. So you can just look for examples and then put in the formulas and then I believe you'll get your answer. So thank you very much. If you find value, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to PE Academy or you are yet to subscribe, kindly click on that subscribe button to subscribe. So with that, I'll see you all in another video. Thank you.